absolute collapse. In 2023-24, the most successful team in all of the Netherlands has been experiencing a downturn that almost seems incomprehensible. They aren't winning the hearts of the faithful support either, losing by three goals to nil by half-time against their biggest rivals at home doesn't help, getting the very same match abandoned after those same fans couldn't bear to watch another second doesn't help either. These players just aren't good enough. Wesley Schneider. This team should be called FC Amsterdam, not Ajax. They are unrecognizable. Marco van Basten. Ajax have to think like a relegation candidate at the moment. You are no longer Ajax. Raphael van der Vaart. Currently, the team sits in 12th place after 11 games played with 12 points. They've lost five of these games, drawn three, only won three, and are in the absolute worst form that the club has ever been in at this stage of an Eredivisie season. And not too long ago, they were dead lost. This has never happened before this season. On the opposite end of the spectrum, league leaders PSV sit on 36 points with a perfect 100% win rate. They also thumped Ajax 5-2. The contrast is outrageous. It really is quite something. Who could have seen this coming? How did we get to this point? How long will this go on? And how do they fix this? Yo, what is going on guys? Hope we're all doing well. I'm Tinashe, welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, we have a lot of bad news to dish out in today's episode. There seem to be a lot of reasons for this, some of which may seem obvious, and some of which may mean more than meets the eye. Failing trust in a new, relatively inexperienced manager, a board that doesn't seem to know what direction they want to take themselves in, let alone the club in, players that probably shouldn't be first string at this level just yet. At an average age of about 22.5 years old, this Ajax team is the youngest in the current Eredivisie season. Daily Blind, Dusan Tadic, Davy Klaassen, they're all gone. Where are the senior figures? We'll go into more detail on this as we go along in this video and listen, I know that there are times where relatively inexperienced teams don't need the quote unquote experience to win games and titles. However, this doesn't seem like one of those times. There is so much to worry about. But something you shouldn't ever need to worry about is finding yourself a sleek, rare football jersey. You might be wondering where I got this cool jersey from. If you are, don't, I'll tell you. It's from Sangalo, the sponsor of today's video. This right here is the Paro FC kit the current champions of the Bhutan Premier League. Sangalo have partnered with some of the biggest teams from some of the most underappreciated leagues in the world to increase global exposure and bring you rare, high-quality jerseys, and they ship globally. With the holiday sale they're having right now, you can get up to 40% off on selected jerseys, which is a pretty good deal. If you're up for something a little bit different, whatever your style is, and you maybe feel like supporting the channel by supporting a sponsor of the channel, you can go ahead and check out Sangalo's catalog at sangalo.co, or you can use the link in the description. Thanks again to Sangalo for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. If you've been living under a rock, Ajax is a historically prominent team, more than that in the Dutch context, more Eredivisie titles than any other team with 36, more KNVB Cups than any other team with 20, more European Cups than any other Dutch team with 4. Johan Cruyff would be proud to hear that list of accolades, I'm sure. Not sure how he would feel about the current situation though. During the off-season, I actually spent a bit of time in Amsterdam and I was staying quite close to the Johan Cruyff Arena. And one of the days I was there, I went to a bar with a friend and spoke with some locals about Ajax and Listen, there are problems, but there was tentative hope about the upcoming season. Seems like that hope is all but gone for a lot of people. And maybe a good place for us to start the story is the management. It's been about a year and a half since Eric Ten Hag led Ajax to their 36th league title. For those faithful, lifelong supporters, that must feel like decades ago. Unfortunately for Ajax, the cracks were showing even back then. Alfred Schroeder came in after Ten Hag and was expected to pick up the torch and carry it in Ten Hag's place. Initially, he did. They won their first six games of the year, but after that, the quote-unquote collapse began. From the start of November 2022 to the end of January 2023, they did not win a single match Six draws and one loss. Steven Bergwijn, Daley Blind, and Owen Wendell came in as high-profile signings, but were just not consistent at all, any of them. Ajax suffered their worst finishing position since 2009, third place. Now, that might not sound too bad to you. There's a reason I said, quote-unquote, the real collapse was 
still yet to come. As for Schroeder, he didn't even last until the end of the season. He was sacked in January while the team were sitting in fifth. John Heitinger, manager of Young Ajax, the reserve side, stepped in to help fill in the cracks in the interim and managed to secure that third place spot. Again, third place might not sound too bad from someone looking from the outside in, but we also have to remember that this meant that Ajax failed to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in 13 years. Now, there are obviously monetary implications here and, you know, reputation implications. Something had to be done. And I guess the answer to this dilemma was Maurice Stein. Ajax began the 23-24 season under the management of Maurice Stein, a decent manager by most metrics. He led what was described as an overachieving Sparta Rotterdam side to a 6th place finish in 22-23 in his first year there, bumping up his own personal profile in the process. It's worth noting that this was Sparta's highest finish in the league since 1996. So sure, he didn't exactly fit the profile of an Ajax man to some people, but I guess he kind of deserved at least a shot to prove himself, right? Attacking football is at the forefront of what I want from my team as a coach. He defiantly let this be known upon being appointed to the hottest of hot seats of the biggest team in the country. The man was hungry, but now it seems as though his achievement with Sparta Rotterdam was exactly as I just described it earlier, an overachievement. As you've probably guessed, the stories that have come out about the backroom situations here have been less than ideal. Stein changed the language in the dressing room to Dutch at the beginning of the preseason. The previous spoken language in the dressing room was English under Ten Hag. These were the words of Peter Svats, an editor for Football International, the oldest Dutch running football magazine. So lots of problems. Problem number one, just about every top team in Europe's top divisions has an international dressing room. I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to incorporate English in some way, shape or form. It just makes sense. Problem number two, it seems as though Stein didn't even have that much say in the sort of players that were being brought in in the first place. After he made this ruling, he got 11 foreign players who didn't speak Dutch. Stein didn't know most of the signings. They won their opening game of the season 4-1, but it was all downhill from there. No wins followed for seven matches in a row. These included the hammerings against league leaders PSV and Feyenoord we mentioned earlier. Feyenoord were three goals up at the halfway point, and it only took 11 minutes after the restart for the Ajax fans, who were at their own home ground by the way, to launch flares on the pitch. The angry supporters had to be dispersed using tear gas. There was no other choice by the officials. The game was stopped 56 minutes in. To make matters worse, when the game was completed behind closed doors a few days later, it only took Santiago Jimenez three minutes to complete his hat-trick in the match with the game ending by four goals to nil. Oh, man, it gets even worse. After that match, the club's sporting director, Sven Mislintat, was axed. Coincidentally, Mislintat was the one who advocated for the hiring of Stein in the first place, which is quite ironic because to quote Pete Svats again, the trust between Stein and Mislintat evaporated very early in the season. It was far from paradise, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Before moving on to the shortcomings when it comes to actual gameplay, I feel like we have to dive a little bit further into Sven Mislintat. There is alleged shady activity to cover there. For added context, Mislintat is a pretty highly experienced German scout and sporting director. He was the chief scout for Borussia Dortmund during the Klopp years, credited with being amongst the driving factors behind the likes of Robert Lewandowski, Marco Reus, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang going to Dortmund. He was an Arsenal director at one point, and he had a good stint at Stuttgart too. Come May 2023, he was hired by Ajax as their sporting director, a position that was vacated by Mark Overmars a year prior to that. Just to backtrack a little bit there, after 10 years as their director, Overmars resigned in early 2022. However, it's obvious that he was forced to leave after some very concerning reports about workplace harassment and abuse of power came out. The title of this video was not clickbait, it is an outrageous downward spiral. It's believed that a large part of why Miss Lintard himself was axed was due to some shady dealings of his own. It came out that Ajax bought Croatian left back Borna Sosa through a German agency that owns shares in a private company that Ms. Lintard 
is the largest shareholder for. To say that this was a conflict of interest would be a massive understatement, which is exactly why mass investigations are going on surrounding this man's shady dealings and, you know, the man himself, as we speak. Concerns over the legitimacy of the ethics and the price paid for said player, as well as the legitimacy and ethics of, you know, any of the signings that were made during Miss Lintard's five months with the club have all been raised. Now, it is worth noting that Ajax themselves have emphasized that all of these investigations form no part in his eventual dismissal, rather that he was sacked because he was trash. Over 110 million euros spent on players, and almost none of them seem worth it. I mean, sure, 156 million euros recouped in player sales, the likes of Jurian Timber, Mohamed Kudus, and Edson Alvarez packed their bags. However, it's not like we can celebrate the income when these players weren't replaced at all. Remember that Miss Lintat's job would have been to assess and ensure that all of the incoming players were the right fit and the outgoing ones didn't negatively affect the club too much. His job would have been to ensure that Maurice Stain was the right fit too. He wasn't. In fact, Stain was out the door four months into the job. And you know what? His final match in charge was actually kind of poetic in how it all panned out. Utrecht took a 2-0 lead, however Ajax fought back well and made it 3-2 by the 65th minute. Symbolism for Ajax's season turnaround, yes? Wrong. Utrecht went on to win the game 4-3. Also, the match was paused in the 90th minute because somebody threw a cup on the field. I know, a massive safety hazard. He could have been killed. I haven't even mentioned that Edwin van der Sar had been a director at the club since 2012 and the CEO of Ajax since 2016. Him and Overmars ran a very tight ship that won five titles in the 10 years that they worked alongside each other. However, van der Sar retired from the club in May 2023 and on an unrelated but very unfortunate note, he's been recovering from a brain hemorrhage suffered in July of this year. There is so much that's gone on that I've chosen not to include in this video so not to make it too convoluted, so much that we'll never know about, I'm pretty sure. But if you've made it this far in the video, you probably realize just how much of a shit show all of it is. It seems that important figures, both on the pitch and behind the scenes, have all departed in the space of about a year and a half. Seems suitable replacements have yet to be sourced either. And guess what? We haven't even began to talk about the actual football. For a franchise that is universally known as the birthplace of modern total football, this team is horribly predictable and passive. Now, this is as much the fault of the manager as it is the players and the backroom staff, I'm well aware. However, at this point, I would say that playing the blame game is kind of a useless exercise. On the 27th of October, the analyst published an article detailing how woeful this Ajax side was. They go into detail about how this is Ajax's worst start to a season ever after seven games played, how much of a contrast the club is compared to the Ten Hag days. Most significantly, they spoke about how Ajax were in 17th place at the time they published the article, but based on expected statistics, they should have been in last place. They were in last place two days later. 5-2 to PSV. They've managed to work their way back up to 12th, but they're still only three points away from the drop zone. 24 goals conceded, 21 goals scored. They concede a goal every 41 minutes. They have amongst the highest turnover rates in the entire league. They win possession back amongst the lowest in the entire league. When the Dutch national squad played against France in a Euro qualifier on the 13th of October, it was apparently the first match since 1981 where none of the starting 11 had ever played for Ajax in the Eredivisie. Now that is a stat. Before we wrap this one up, I think it's important for us to all take into consideration the fact that since John van Schip has taken over as interim manager, Ajax have been undefeated in the league. It's only been three games, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. However, I think it's safe to say that this club is facing a steep mountain on their way to restoring themselves to their former glory. Leadership needs a restructure. Lines need to be drawn. Things can't go on like this, right? Because, as per Alchemian Dachblatt, another long-standing Dutch news outlet the day after the Feyenoord demolition, no one is really the boss at the club at the moment. And at the same time, everyone is a little bit. And there we have it. A crazy, crazy story, but also a developing one. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe, follow the socials, all of that. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.